This video contains expressions of bigotry of all kinds. Uh, let's see what they label as bigotry. I, I have a feeling a lot of it is not actually going to be bigotry so much as just differences of opinion and people not accepting differences of opinion. Also, it's called these fans are actually political predators. Is that not what you would also be doing by making a video like this? I mean, if you're trying to say, hey, no, we're fans and we're going to talk about how our politics are better, you're doing the inverse of the same thing, so, so the hypocrisy is palpable. Unless specifically stated, those who lend their voice to this video are not members of the fandom initiative and aren't accountable for statements made by members of the initiative. Okay. This is quite a build-up for something that's going to be bogus, I can assure you. If you wish to share your experience with abuse from anti-fans, or as a former member of an anti-fandom group, email us at fandominitiativeyt at gmail.com. <laughs> um, okay, right. What is anti-fandom? You know, I could talk about why I don't like anti-fandom, but I'd rather talk about why I like the term anti-fandom, because I think it's a really good term. We asked creators and fans to talk about their experience and thoughts on anti-fandom. Now, before we get into any of this, I'm going to give my thoughts on anti-fandom. It doesn't exist unless people are outright attacking a fandom a a as a whole. People of all different sorts, you know, politically, ideologically, um, or, or just, you know, in terms of just what they believe in general, what they like about a property or, or something they're a fan of, can differ. Like, as a massive Dragon Ball Z fan, the reasons I love Dragon Ball Z might be completely different than someone else who loves Dragon Ball Z. I am a massive Star Wars fan. The real Star Wars, not Disney Star Wars. That statement is probably going to give me the label of an anti-fan. No, I am a fan, have been a fan for nearly three decades. Uh, and because of that, I know what I want and don't want from the, you know, what I have been a fan of, what I've put hard-earned money towards for many, many years, what has taken a lot of time of my life, my childhood, the whole nine. So as a fan, I know what I want. It's not just about accepting whatever they give you and saying, be happy with it. We're making stuff for the fans. No, that's kind of up to the fans. So at, at the end of the day, the idea of anti-fandom doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because you're going to have people that are fans of things that aren't going to agree on everything. Some people, they might love the Cell Saga in Dragon Ball Z. Others might think the show should have ended after the Frieza Saga and have not watched it since. And you know what? That's fine, because people are going to be able to bring different conversations to the table about why they have those views. And as long as no one's getting butt hurt and thrown around like, you know, racial slurs or something, people should be fine to have that discussion. The entire point of the movie Fanboys was more or less about that sentiment. Like, there's this entire beginning portion of the film talking about Star Trek versus Star Wars fans and how they go at it, and it is hilarious. Anti-fandom, this movement, isn't about fandom or the media. It's about power. It's about brotherhood and ganging up. It's about feeling like you know some big secret, like you're the little guy taking on the big shadowy leftist woke powers. Already, they brought politics into it. That, that's that's all, like, yeah, hey, it's about ganging up on others. It's not about fandom. How do you know this? Like, like what is your credentials? Why, why are you the arbiter of what anti-fandom is or what these other individuals who disagree with you, like, what makes you... The, the individual on the subject that is the subject matter expert. How are you the SME for fandom or anti-fandom? Uh, and why do you gotta jump straight to politics? Again, as someone who is a firmly down the middle type of individual, I don't like Disney Star Wars because frankly, I think it bastardizes so much of what Star Wars was in effort to make quick cash and using a lot of political ideology. I don't want to see real-world political ideology in Star Wars. Star Wars already had enough of its, you know, in-universe political ideology that had some basis around past political ideology, not present. So the fact that you're jumping to, to making this political out the gate is bothersome because it shows that you also don't care too much about what you're trying to claim you're a fan of or fandom in general. Because if you're a fan of something, you want to talk about that first in politics, either second, third, or preferably never.
At the end of the day, it's make-believe, it's playing pretend for adults, or, you know, man-children. Despite what any of them say, it isn't about fandom, it's contrary to the definition of fandom, which is basically liking things together as a- Mm-hmm. Uh, y yes, the, the definition of fandom, at least my definition of it, because you just said liking things together, and that's a fair definition. No, a fandom is a group of individuals who are a fan of the same thing. It is a collection of fans. The thing is, once that group gets so large, it's going to splinter off into people who have different sorts of ideologies. Like, used to, there were just comic conventions, or there was just conventions, you know, they, 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 there weren't necessarily always dedicated anime conventions, or always dedicated comic conventions, or always dedicated sci-fi conventions. Eventually, those things had to splinter off, because the group of nerds that were attending these conventions, they just got so big, like, we need to start, you know, cutting it off, you know, s setting aside different cons for different niches. Uh, it is like, that's a real-world practical application of what we're seeing. So when we talk about, you know, a group of fans, like I mentioned earlier, Star Wars has been going since the 70s. We are in 2023. That is 50 years. Do you think everyone over the course of 50 years, just because they all like Star Wars, are all always going to agree? No, not at all. So you're going to have different segments and different sections of the fandom that are in agreement with one another, that are in disagreement with one another. I mean, way before the Disney stuff, way before all the, the you know, accusations of going woke and political, there was the, the prequel lovers versus the prequel haters. There was the original trilogy purists. There was the those who, you know, defended the EU. And and then there was some intersection and, inter you know, cross with those, with all those different, uh, you know, different viewpoints in Star Wars. So acting like this has not always been a thing is absolutely mind-blowing. As someone who's been a staunch prequel defender my entire life, hey, I'm loving the fact that they are now getting the respect that they deserve, and I really don't care if it came at the cost of this crappy Disney stuff. But, you know, that's my viewpoint. Is that going to make me an anti-fan? No, it's someone who has been a fan for so long. And, you know, I don't admit what I've been called an anti-fandom member in the, you know, the, the early 2000s, that that was a term, because I liked uh, The Phantom Menace. A community. The end result of all this is just a vortex of hate and misery, and it's all revolving around this missing centre where the media or the community or the liking should be, and it just isn't. Pillar of garbage, taking pop culture seriously. Well, there's your problem. Stop taking it seriously. It's pop culture. There are things in life to be taken seriously, but I'm sorry, every Iron Man movie ain't got to be taken too terribly seriously. That, that's, honestly, the, 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 I can already tell I do not like this channel. This is the very first time I've ever heard anything from Pillar of Garbage. But with a slogan like that, taking pop culture seriously, the idea is that we shouldn't take it too seriously. That's why we're all fans. Because we can all come together and forget about the serious stuff to be fans of whatever fictional thing that we're a fan of and shut out the outside world for a while. So by taking it so seriously, you're poisoning the well, and now it's causing others to take it seriously because they miss the days when it wasn't being taken seriously, and it's a fight fire with fire sort of mentality. If fandom is the community of people built around a deep shared appreciation and passion for a thing, Anti-fandom describes the opposite, a community built upon a shared animosity and antagonism of it. Okay, but who are you to say that those anti-fans aren't fans, that they're not part of the fandom? Let's say that you are a fan of the Pokemon card game. You have a bunch of people who are fans of the Pokemon card game. And then, let's say you've got fans that are, you know, people that are a group of fans of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. If the Yu-Gi-Oh card game fans, you know, join with the Pokemon card game fans, and then start trying to, to weave their way in and twist the Pokemon game and change it and be like, oh, we should make this more like Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, we should do this. If they worm their way into a space that was not theirs and then try and change things and the Pokemon people get, you know, outraged by it and start making videos, hey, we don't like the changes happening in Pokemon. Hey, the, you know, this group of people is changing what we've loved. It, by this description, the Pokemon players would be the anti-fans. Why? They were there first. This was their fandom. 
and it was usurped by individuals who honestly just came in with no real claim to it. And don't get me wrong, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, card games in general, those are for everyone, but this should be a simple analogy for you guys to wrap your head around. If anything, the anti-fandom, you know, people, you to me, those are the real fans. Those are the people trying to protect, you know, pieces of, of pop culture and, and media and nerd culture that have been around for years upon years from, you know, whatever this modern version of it is, which oftentimes is absolutely inferior. So, yeah, I, the anti-fandom, as you call them, I'm willing to bet in the vast majority of cases are the real fans. I just realized I've been watching this video in negative quality and didn't even realize it. I thought that was just how the video was shot. So uh, going forward, it's going to be the, the correct colors. I, I don't know what happened there. So sorry about that, guys. This isn't what you'd expect. No matter how much hate you expect. No matter how much hate you know you will get. You are never prepared for how hard it hits you. Hundreds to thousands of people sent to call you names, to bully you. Isn't that what you guys do? You call names a bully. Hey, I don't like Ray Skywalker. Misogynist! You don't like a strong female character. Well, what, what are you talking about? I, I love Ahsoka. I love Cara Dune. You like Cara Dune? Oh, well, guess what? Now you're a transphobe because that means you like Gina Carano. What? We were talking about strong female characters. I was talking about the character of Cara Dune. But yeah, I also like Gina Carano. I think she's cool. That's it. Transphobe confirmed. Like... Bro, n no, y y uh, you guys are doing all the name calling. Don't let this reverse psychology game fly. That ain't gonna happen. I have never, or if I have, rarely ever called people names like on Twitter, for example. I don't say, yo, F-Wad, hey, retard, or anything like that. I absolutely get that on, on my Twitter. I mean, I just did a video showing my, my responses about, you know, the whole uh, Brie Larson situation that I was involved in. I was called a bunch of nasty names. I, at no point in that video, uh, when, you know, in my Twitter responses, called any of them any names. I was completely respectful and, and didn't attack anybody. So, no, at least when it comes to me personally, which granted is anecdotal, I'm not doing any name calling, and the majority of the people in what you're calling anti-fandom they are only doing the name calling at this point, and, you know, to to dish out what you were throwing at them first, usually with no basis other than again politics, which shouldn't have invaded fandom in the first place. To intimidate you, woke is a way to justify your poverty. They are sent. You're the reason why Hollywood is trash. I mean, neither of those are are, are name calling. I mean, one of them is a, a sentence that, frankly, is. Whether it's true or not doesn't matter. Oh, well, it's words on a computer. And the other, you're the reason why Hollywood is trash? Well, if you were one of the people contributing to, you know, trash Hollywood, like, oh, we need to remake Ghostbusters with all females because empowerment. Like, if, if, if that was you and that movie sucked, well, yeah. You were one of the voices that were supporting it, and that movie sucked, so you would be the reason. At least that movie was trash, that movie, part of Hollywood. Like, technically, that holds up to scrutiny. To hate on you. Transphobia doesn't exist. Trans women are men. Nobody likes her LGBT leftist ideology. Worse. Go cry about it, Zionist. This is what I could be wrong. But it didn't look like. Let's, let's go back and check. It didn't look like they showed who said that. Uh. And to hate on you. Oh, oh. So notice how the last one is show the name. This one is super zoomed in. It, it doesn't give us a name. I'm, I'm not saying that you know. <sighs> whatever. This is what happens when you pierce the anti-fandom bubble. It's not fun. Because this soy shit's been so disproven and you love to use it. It's a nice way of not calling you gay. You know, oh, like in the old so way of like gay. people used so to say, let me ask dude, you stop this. being is so gay. Is gay an insult? Yeah. yeah. But it's also not. I mean, yeah. G gay can be an insult. Like, it's. And it can also not be an insult. Like,. I'm sorry, certain words are, are fine to use in certain situations, and they're not in others. I mean, I've, I've never gone up and called someone with Down Syndrome a retard. However, when, you know, my best friend, you know, spills his, his you, know, bottle, you know, glass of soda or whatever all over my floor, I'm gonna call him a retard. There's a bit of a difference between the two. So, yeah, if, if someone wants to use the word gay as an insult... I'm sorry, they could be doing a lot worse things. I I'd rather someone call someone who's not gay, gay, and move on with their life than, you know, like, eat a baby or something. Not entirely unexpected. 
he's a great supporting character and a supporting actor, which is what Diego Luna should be. But of course, Diego Luna has the diversity aspect and they're pushing identity politics with this. They 100% are. When you decide to call out these toxic channels for what they are, which is just a cesspool of bigotry. I got these faggots like uh, responding to comic skate elves. What's more racist, calling somebody a nigger or doing a lynching? Where the worst of the toxic community gather. A white guy will eat. I mean, to be fair, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, you know, sanction using, you know, using the N word like that. However, he was probably doing it to make a point. Like they're le clearly leaving out context since these are clips. However, if I had to take a guess. What he was trying to prove was that saying a word, no matter how heinous the word, will always be a step below murdering someone because of their race. And yeah, technically he is correct. D do you need to use the hard R to make that point? No, not at all. However, what's being said there is more than just, oh, he said the hard R, he must be racist. No, I again, they are clearly cutting out context, but it seems like what the guy was trying to prove was that Words will never be as harmful as doing actual physical harm, and maybe that should be taken, you know, far more seriously than words. Because no, words aren't violence. I'm, I'm sorry, they're not. A piece of chicken, mm, that's some good chicken. Water, <laughs> the watermelon's yeah. good. Black people will eat it and they say, mm, 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 that's some good watermelon. You'll get pushed back. And okay, so I mean, there, there was a stereotype joke there. I mean, again. What does this have to do with fandom? Like, okay, if someone made an uncouth joke, everyone has done that. The person who's doing the voiceover for this video, I'm sure, has got some uncouth jokes they've told in the past. They ain't some squeaky clean individual, you know, and, and if you go back and find their history, I'm sure you can find something. Not that I'm telling any of you guys to do that. I ain't about that cancel culture bogus. My point is, oh well. You know, he's doing something that would honestly, it'd be in a stand-up set in like 2007. Like, like that was a pretty fine whatever joke. Are people gonna get offended by it? Sure, whatever. But you don't have a right to be offended. And just because he did something stereotypical, all all of a sudden that's you know indicative of everyone in anti fandom. There's a lot of broad generalizations being made here. This is a horrible video. That's I mean it's obvious propaganda of of course. But we're only four minutes in, and you can already see how sloppily put together it is because someone like me who doesn't have a whole lot of familiarity with either side of this like uh, they've shown one channel so far that I watch because I do watch geeks and gamers I enjoy the geeks and gamers channel everyone else they've shown I have no idea who they are so you know I, I'm only tangentially t tangentially familiar with uh, you know either side of this argument and already I can see that this side uh, you know the one that made this video looks actually looks far worse because they're because of how lazy and sloppy they are and how unwilling to just move on they are. And even if you think you're ready for it, it'll hit you harder than you expect. When many big studios made it clear that they would be making an effort to be more inclusive with their projects involving more women, people of color, and members of the LGBTQ plus community, most people had our reaction. Nice. It's about time. Largely done just because public opinion had shifted so far into supporting this that they can't ignore it. We don't delude ourselves. It's done for money. No, no, no. You are deluding yourself if you're okay. Like, yeah, you're right. It is done for money. However... These sort of things aren't selling, so you're deluding yourself when, you know, you get mad because the book was cancelled. Well, you know, when, when the Gay Robin book was cancelled, it's because no one bought it. So, these companies doing it for money, it's not paying off, it's not successful, and, and here we are, people, like, this is, this is something I'm very familiar with. This is something my channel was founded on, on, you know, ideologies like this. Sorry, we don't need more diversity, we don't need more women, we don't need more gay characters if you're only doing it to check boxes. If it's natural and organic to the story, then that is great, that is fine. If you want to tell a story about you know, a, a, a diverse character, or if you want to have a story with multiple diverse characters, go for it as long as it's, as long as it's organic. As long as it wasn't a bunch of, you know, dudes with suits sitting in their, you know, corporate round table with their token black advisor and their token female board member because, you know, you have to have them on the board sit around saying, all right, uh, for this movie to get greenlit, we need to have at least uh, three black people, an Asian woman. Uh, obviously, we need trans representation. 
all of this must be filled uh, before the script is even written. That way we can get this movie greenlit. Right, guys? Okay, break. Let's go to lunch. Like, that is, that's crap. That's inorganic. No one wants that. There have been plenty of diverse characters that who you're calling the fandom menace have enjoyed. It's so amazing that you largely ignore whenever they praise these diverse characters, or when some of them have created their own diverse character. I mean, the Ripaverse is created by a black man. His own comic book, his own comic book company, an entire company created by a black man who created his own original superhero, a black superhero. But you guys are the ones that call him Uncle Tom, call him bootlicker. Uh, you know, you actually call him a hard R word because you think that because you know he's a black guy who you know is libertarian that you know you you can be not even casually racist towards him, but actually racist towards him. I've seen so much hate directed towards Eric July, who hasn't done anything other than had conversations with people that you don't like and made his own original black character and said, as a black man, I find it offensive when you take white characters and race swap them to black characters because it's showing me that black people are not good enough to have their own characters. They need white people's sloppy seconds. That is what he has said. That's what he has done. And he has been, you know, just, just ruthlessly dragged for it. And yet, somehow, his comic book company... If Ripaverse, it is selling gangbusters, but but you guys don't want to admit that because it just means that people like him are right. That people like me, we are a okay with diversity when it's done properly, and just shoehorning anyone in there to check a diversity box is not good. That's what makes us the actual fans. We put the fiction and the story and the characters before anything else that is real world. That's what real fans are. People that appreciate the fiction, the fantasy, not the real world that we are trying to escape. But it's a step in the right direction. You take the wins where you can and then continue to push for more. But that's not what these channels push for. They want art to go in the opposite direction. Saying they want art to go in the opposite direction is so disingenuous. What they've said many, many, many times, because I'm, I'm familiar with Chris Gore. I used to watch G4 way back in the day. I was a big fan of DV Tuesday and thought Chris Gore was awesome. So, yeah, I, I absolutely watch film threats. And, uh, no, what Chris Gore has always said is that he's tired, once again, of the forced diversity. He said make Marvel male again, not because men are better, but because Disney has been making a conscious effort not to you know, just just remove the men and input female characters, but to make the female characters boring, bland, and inherently better than men, inherently better than their male characters. She-Hulk was a prime example of this. She-Hulk was inherently better than Hulk in the writing just because she was a female. That's lazy. No one wants this. If you're going to give a She-Hulk, great. She-Hulk is awesome in the 80s and 90s comics. But instead, you're using modern-day weird sort of gender ideologies to make your She-Hulk movie instead of honoring source material that people have grown up with. So, yeah, if, if you're going to give us crap female characters and crap diverse characters, yeah, then make Marvel male again. And make claims like, keep politics out of it. Identity politics. PC. SJW. Pandering. Tokenization. Every single one of these actually does in fact happen and anyone who you know claims they don't are wrong identity politics let, 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 let's you know go ahead and throw identity politics out there watch any marvel movie post 2016 and try and find me an example of any positive right-leaning or libertarian ideologies it is not there now do the same for the left every single marvel film has you know left-leaning ideology so either A, be fair and do the positive and negatives of both, or leave it out of there. So yes, identity politics, absolutely a thing, not just in Marvel, but literally in, in all of modern nerd media, DC, Star Wars, the whole nine. PC, yeah, political correctness is absolutely a problem. There are little guidelines for the, the new James Bond movies, uh, or at least, you know, the Daniel Craig run, about, you know, how he must interact with women 
as opposed to the previous Bond films. And, and you know, that's just antithetical to the character. It's a political correctness thing. SJW. Look, I'm not going to get into the SJW thing. It's a boring, played-out acronym, or initialism. It's not actually an acronym. It's what's called initialism. So here, yeah, here's a little bit of uh, information for you. you. You come to my channel, I like to be educational. If it's, if it's an acronym, if the you know, letters spell out a word. So in Futurama, when, you know, there's Fathers Against Rude Television, FART, that is an acronym, but SJW, Social Justice Warrior, that doesn't spell it a word, it's initialism. There you go. There's your education for the day. Let's get back to something that matters. Here we go. Pandering. Yeah, pandering is absolutely a thing. When you write in, and tokenization and pandering, are honestly, they, they go together. You are pandering to the masses by tokenizing the fictional characters. So when you have, you know, characters like a uh, female Thor, whose only identifiable trait is that she is Thor, but without a penis... Yeah, that is tokenization. They have tokenized Thor, a famous male character, now given a, a gender swap in this case, that has none of the real drawbacks that you know the, the original Thor has, and now just doesn't have a penis. They tokenized Thor, and the, you know the reason they tokenized Thor is to pander to females who read comics, or at least the audience that they think is there, even though, you know, when you look at the demographics, it's a much smaller audience, at least you know, for something like Thor. I'm sorry, that's a pretty male-centric comic that mostly males were reading. So when you pander to that female audience, and by doing so, tokenize the, the character that was originally being read by a predominantly male audience, yeah, th there's examples of this happening all throughout comics and movies and, and, and TV shows and e even in D&D, &D, tabletop role-playing games. But I, I'm, you know, here they're going to probably act like it isn't real. The message. Sacrificing story for agenda or the current grand catch-all, woke. Now here I'm inclined to agree. I've said many times on my channel, I hate the word woke in, in most instances. Now, woke is absolutely a real thing. That being said, it is an incredibly lazy, like he said, catch-all term. I'll, I'll meet you guys in the middle. You know, I, as far, it took me five minutes into your video to agree with something, but I am agreeing now. Woke is an awful term. You can use far better long-worded descriptions to explain the issues you are having with a certain piece of media in most instances. Uh, now, people who are throwing around the word woke left and right, I think are, are morons nine times out of ten. I mean, I made an entire video about Tim Pool calling the Mario movie woke, and I, I, you know, I slayed the guy. I just, I raked him over the coals. I think Tim Pool had a moronic take on, on the Mario Bros. movie, um, and, you know, in claiming it woke. I mean, what, what does that even mean? Now, woke has a, a pretty, you know, loose definition, and yeah, it is absolutely something that is happening in modern media, that being said, just calling something woke is not valid criticism, it's lazy, and it's the right-wing version of the left-wing calling everyone Nazis just because they disagree with them. Yeah, woke, Nazi, you know, racism, it's all lost all meaning because it just gets thrown around so much. That way when something that is actually woke or actually racist or whatnot does come out, uh, people pay no heed because, oh, whatever, it's just those two sides squawking again. The truth is, these are all buzzwords used to dog whistle and hide their true meaning. And it all boils down to- Yes. Yes, they are buzzwords. What about your guys' buzzwords? Misogynistic, transphobic, uh, pretty much any sort of ist and phobe are absolutely your guys' buzzwords. Don't pretend you don't use buzzwords as well. It's just an effective way of getting people to click on your video. Because at the end of the day, you're doing this for some sort of financial gain. You're not out here making this video out of the goodness of your heart. It's like, oh, we're going to white knight and save all of fandom. We're going to lose money on this, but it doesn't matter as long as fandom is saved. No. You're putting this out on a YouTube channel that's, you know, several, it's a conglomeration of several big monetized YouTube channels. This is absolutely for you guys to make money as well. You use buzzwords just like they use buzzwords because at the end of the day, you might all technically be, you know, no real nerds, but you also want just slice of that pie so that you can go on to keep buying the nerdy, you know, commercialized items that you want to purchase. To the same thing, hatred of women and minorities. Hello, I guess I just want to have a little chit chat. Something that's been on my mind lately. A fan's zen perspective on anti-fandom. Alright, if if, let's see how zen this is. I can get behind something zen. I may disagree, but I can appreciate being zen about a disagreement. Over cynical reviews of pretty much non-consequential media. 
I'm not even sure I'll call it um, cynical is more bashing. A lot of it's based off of perception of like representation and all that stuff. You hear these buzzwords and you hear them all the time. Man, just trying to sit down and enjoy something. You know, when you sit there and try to have that experience, it kind of takes you out of it. it kind of ruins. It's all CGI garbage now, and women are ruining it. The CGI is garbage now, and, and Disney has been in a controversy over that. Like The CGI being garbage is actually that's an objective fact. Their CGI teams are quitting in droves and talking about the horrible working conditions. The, idea, you know, the women are ruining it. There are not very many people saying that women are ruining it. They're saying things like focusing on, on females and writing them poorly is ruining it. Or, you know, putting all these female executives in position of power. Or stating that giving these women directors directing jobs when all they've done is two episodes of TV and a documentary. All of a sudden, they're in charge of a multi-million dollar superhero movie. They only got the job because they're a woman. Yeah, there's probably some truth to a statement like that. If, if all you've done as a female director is two episodes of a TV show and a documentary, where, how do we know, uh, you know, that you have got the, the skills to helm a multi-million dollar superhero movie in a giant franchise? I'm sorry, but no TV or documentary prepares you for a directing job of that magnitude. It's the experience, and the truth is, if you look down the road, did your life change that much over one show, one movie? No, it's just a moment in time. So I'm going to disagree with this, the whole it's just a moment in time thing. People's lives didn't change after one you know, TV show, one movie. They're changing after a pattern of complete degradation. When you watch the Star Wars original trilogy in theaters, it was, um, it was amazing for those individuals that were there. Which is why when the prequels came out, it was so divisive. Because so many adults didn't like it. Were they anti-fans? For To them, was it just a moment in time? No, to them, it wasn't Star Wars. It wasn't what they grew up with, and that hurt them. I, I'm sorry, when you have an emotional attachment to something, and you feel like that thing has betrayed you, isn't it your side that says all the time you're entitled to your feelings? Like, oh, I, I feel like uh, I've been abused. Oh, well, you're entitled to those feelings. Let, you know, let, Talk about it. Open up. We need to hear this. You can get it out. So take your time. But you're entitled to your feelings. All right. So why is the 30-year-old dude who lived his life being a Star Wars fan as a child, why is he not entitled to his feelings when it changes years later? Like, it seems like the only time people are entitled to their feelings or when it meshes with what you say or believe. I find that to be a bit hypocritical. Thank you, and I hope you all have a good day. They have a memorial to George Floyd. This is Ryan Kennel, an alt-right YouTuber. He's... All right, we can go ahead and disregard the start of video. He is not alt-right. He is absolutely not alt-right at all. Anyone who calls Ryan Kennel alt-right is throwing out, once again, buzzwords. They were talking about buzzwords earlier. This is an absolute buzzword. Uh, he in, is he right leaning? Most likely, yes. I have no idea, you know, who he votes for. Don't care who he votes for. He's absolutely, you know, right. But the the idea of calling him alt right just because he disagrees with you is so disingenuous. And, and either a you did your research and you don't care, you're trying to be slanderous, or you just didn't do any research and you're going off of the Twitter buzzwords. Either way. It's absolutely disgusting to, to call this guy alt-right. Alt-right means white supremacist. This man is not a white supremacist just because he dared criticize black people in superhero movies, you know, if the movies aren't very good or whatever. Like, I cannot believe they're calling him, I guess I can believe they're calling him alt-right, but whatever. To anyone watching this who doesn't know who this is or doesn't know what the fandom initiative is, this is, here is the proof we need, as if we didn't need any up to this point, that they are bunk. Ryan Kinnell may be a douche, may be an asshole, may be a bunch of mean things, but he's not alt-right, he's not a white supremacist. He's the perfect example of the most insidious, toxic type of anti-fan. George Floyd... Racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, COVID denier, pro-January 6th insurrection. Um, yeah, almost none of this is true. Not a racist, not a sexist, 
not a homophobe, and not transphobic. He, he is absolutely, since he's been called all this stuff so much, he's taken to owning it. He will now make more racist jokes than he used to, more sexist jokes, more homo jokes, more trans jokes. He does all that and more now because he's been called this stuff so many times. Yeah, he knows they're not going to stop, so may as well own it. COVID denier, uh, I don't think he was a COVID denier. He was a uh, he was a lab leak sort of, you know, he, he you know perpetuated the theory that it was a lab leak and that it was not near as bad as everyone in the, the media claimed. He was like, you don't need vaccines for 99% of people. It has like a 0.2% mortality rate or whatever. Point is, he was relatively smart about COVID. He didn't deny it. He wasn't like, COVID isn't real. No, he just was a very, very minimalist about COVID, which is fine. And pro January 6th insurrection, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I'd be willing to bet, given all the rest of these aren't true, that that one isn't either. Or if it is true, that it's actually a far more minimal sort of, you know, pro January 6th inter insurrection than what they're claiming here. Because when you say this guy was pro insurrection, that probably sounds a whole lot worse than anything he actually really said about the matter. Memorial. With Ryan is Alex Stein, employee of Glenn Beck's Blaze TV and far right propagandist. Ryan made. Again, yeah, you're right. He is a, that guy is a far right propagandist. I wouldn't even say far right, he's a right leaning propagandist. But this is left-leaning agenda right here. This video is left-leaning agenda. So once again, so much hypocrisy. I made a lot of videos about the She-Hulk series on Disney Plus. Many of them before the show ever came out. And yet he really only. Ryan made more videos about the Disney Plus uh, series She-Hulk than any fan who was excited about the show. Well, and the show more or less flopped. It's not getting a second season. The vast majority of individuals hated it. I mean, it just wasn't a good show. Oh well if he made videos about it. That's his job. He is a YouTuber. His job is to make videos. If people want to watch them, then oh well. The dude is a legit fan. He knows his stuff. You can hear him talk about old, you know, 80s and 90s comics. You can hear him talk in depth about video games. You can hear him talk in depth literally about Harry Potter. I was not expecting some dude who was like an ex-Navy SEAL or whatever with like a big beard like that to know his stuff about Harry Potter. But lo and behold, I've heard him talk about Harry Potter to the nth degree. I was like, well, damn, all right. The dude's a legit nerd. You just don't like his politics. Say it for what it is. He had one thing to say in every video. Seems like nobody really cares about She-Hulk. To promote a garbage series that nobody gives a fuck about, they're using this character and his reveal, his in-costume reveal, in a show no one cares about to get people excited about a show that no one cares about. This is not how a fan behaves. It's also... Yes, yes, it is how a fan behaves if a fan is a fan of the property and they're seeing that property bastardized. Once again, homeboy talking, you don't get to be the arbiter of what a fan is, okay? I am a fan of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And you know what all of us fans did when Dragon Ball GT came out? We freaking rioted because it was garbage. It betrayed everything about what Dragon Ball was. If we sit here and we talk major trash about Dragon Ball GT and claim we're fans of Dragon Ball, are you going to be like, well, that's not how a fan would act. They would just be happy to get this corporate consumerism shoveled down their gullets like a Big Mac because, you know what? Here it is. They're giving you what you want. Spend your money on it. You claim you love it. Yeah, we love good nerdy media. We love good Dragon Ball. We love good Dragon Ball Z. Just slapping the name Dragon Ball on it and giving us a piece of crap anime does not mean that we're not fans when we criticize it. Get the hell out of here. So not how a non-fan behaves. If he's not interested in the show, why does he talk about it so much? Well, his interest isn't in the show itself. It's how many clicks he can get off of telling people that nobody cares about the show. But again, it's not, not what you're doing. You are making a video on YouTube to see how many clicks you can get, to talk about how he is worried about how many clicks he can get. What? And yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I'm making a video, reacting to your video, talking about his video. Like, clearly, we're all doing the same thing here. But you're trying to take some sort of moral high ground and act like you're not doing it. These YouTubers pump out this repetitive, specifically worded content every day, always focused on anything they can call woke. The effect it has on unsuspecting regular viewers is indoctrination. It seems like nobody really cares about She-Hulk. They oversimplify the topic. 
They use emotionally charged and loaded language that elicits animosity. Emotionally charged and loaded language. Bruh. Like two minutes ago, you referred to this dude as alt-right and then called him every istin phobe in the book. And you're now preaching about loaded language? Yo, pot. Hey, hey, pot. Hadn't talked to you in a while. I I I'm Kettle. By the way, did I mention that we're both black? <laughs> every single day. This is how the alt-right and the far-right have successfully drawn regular people into their politics for several years now. So, you, you acknowledge they're successful at it. So does that mean the culture war is winning? Okay, if they're so good at it, and if the culture war is being won by the right-wing or the alt-right or whatever you want to call them. No, they're not alt-right, by the way, if I hadn't made that clear. How come we're still seeing all these agendas in Hollywood movies? Why is Mario being celebrated because it's agendaless, and w when Ant Man has catastrophically failed, when the Marvels has an insane dislike ratio on the the YouTube comments, bro, people are tired of this, and that doesn't make them right wing or alt right. You just think that people are so dumb they can't see through Disney's BS, or maybe you are that dumb yourself. But yeah. No, I, I don't know if the, the right wing or whatever is winning the culture war. Frankly, I hope they are, because I'm tired of seeing race-swapped live-action Disney remakes. I just want good original stories. That simple. This content is not age-restricted. They're using this character and his reveal, his in-costume reveal, in a show no one cares about to get people excited about a show that no one cares about. The more you dive into this, the more you realize what YouTube has done by allowing the algorithm to push these channels. So now they're saying that it's YouTube's fault for allowing it. So they are asking for censorship from YouTube. They're saying, YouTube, these guys don't agree with us. They don't agree with our politics. They don't agree with our positions. You must censor them. How is that not fascistic and authoritarian? They want to call these guys alt-right, but they're out here saying... This is YouTube's fault. YouTube should censor them. Bruh, that's legitimate fascism. They've created a pipeline where people who maybe just want to watch their favorite nerd content or just a simple movie review can easily be led to some pretty atrocious stuff. Was it, was it liberating or was it super liberating for you to say the N-word? These channels give already bigoted people the rhetoric to hide their true thoughts behind fandom. They literally, the quick flash of Trump on the screen, and they didn't say the words, but the words popped on the screen kind of like this guy. How? You just talked about indoctrination. You literally said YouTube gives them the, the chance to indoctrinate others, and you were, this is all an attempt at indoctrination, just indoctrination for your side. You can't be so dumb that you're not realizing this. Like, I, I have to believe you're smarter than this. But no, I really, really don't. I genuinely think your brain has liquidated its subscription to any sort of cognizance. That you actually think you're in the right and not at all doing the, the, the exact same thing as them, but from the opposite side. Wow. Say it now. The nerd word? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, the girl that said it's half black. I mean, I know she looks incredibly white, by the way, but no, no, no. Nina Infinity is, is half black. I thought that mixed race people were allowed to to say that. I'm just throwing that. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the word. Again, I don't condone usage of the word. Even frankly, if I'm gonna be honest, by black people, I think that uh, anyone throwing out that sort of language, it just sort of like propagates it and makes it worse. Um, so, yeah, I, I, but I'm not going to try and ban the word or say no one should ever say that word because, again, people can do what they want. That's what freedom of speech is. But the person that they just got mad at for saying the N-word in this video, uh, she is half black, by the way. Um, she's just incredibly light-skinned and she's got, you know, uh, one of those YouTube lights that, that, like what I'm using right now, that really brighten you up. I'm not this, you know, sour cream looking in real life. I've actually got more of a reddish peachy tone because I was born a redhead. But these sort of lights that YouTube channel people use, it brightens them up for, you know, like being on camera. That girl that just dropped the in bomb, half black. So, I just think she's allowed to use it. Isn't that the rule? 
those who otherwise might not be hateful, Dick. it molds their views to the point that they actually think that they're just being logical. When the Little Mermaid trailer released and there was news about backlash to her being cast with a black actress, that's driven by these guys. Uh, again, you're trying to blame a subset of people on YouTube when you can hop on any, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you're going to see people who don't have any sort of internet presence minus just their daily social media activity that don't like this. Because again, people aren't dumb. They see that this is being done purely for political and pandering reasons. Anytime a Marvel movie comes out, these people will say, M she you, as if to say that somehow women are taking over and therefore ruining it. Which they have been. And it's not the actress's fault or anything like that, but all the recent female-led superhero movies, or even all the recent male-led superhero movies where the show is actually usurped by a female, you know, character, it's just because the characters have been poorly written. It's that simple. Look, this is already going to be an extremely long video because we're not even halfway through this one, so I'm not going to break down how here. If you want me to break down how, if you want me to make a video, bruh, I'll be willing to do it. I will happily make a video about why the MCU is bad. In fact... I'll do that and still say, I think that half the time the MCU was bad. I think that half the time, you know, phases one, two, and three were bad. Not everything that Marvel did was immediately a banger. The backlash to the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and the recent Lord of the Rings shows. Data studies connected that backlash to these YouTube channels. And we're not saying that anyone who doesn't like these things is a far-right lunatic. But much of the narratives, often established about a show or a movie long before it even comes out, clearly gets pushed with coordination and intention by... Okay, but there were so many narratives being about both Lord of the Rings and Kenobi being pushed from the other side. People were talking about how this was amazing for... Uh, both shows were amazing for diversity. They were going to be amazing for female characters. There were all sorts of outlets. Screen Rant, The Gamer, uh, The UK, the, uh, the Daily Mail. All these individuals or all these outlets were pushing how amazing they're going to be. And they all use diversity and representation as the selling point. So when these guys come out and say, that's a bad selling point, we want good stories... Both sides are doing it. You should be mad at the people who are, you know, pushing diversity and inclusion as major reasons to watch the show. That's not why you should watch a show. I don't care who you are. You should not be watching a show because of diversity and inclusion. You should be watching a show for because of good characters, good storytelling, because you find it relatable, because you find it relaxing, because you need the escapism. And if there's diversity and inclusion in it, then fine, cool. But I thought the whole point of being colorblind was to not care about that sort of thing. By these channels. We don't believe that everyone who likes this content is like a slobbering neo-Nazi. And that's the really sinister part of it. Gamers, I have black friends right now. <laughs> Oh no, he made a I have black friends joke. Yeah, when a dude who has been called racist for the last six years or however long on YouTube... Yeah, I would lean into it as well. I, I would absolutely, you know, lean into the to having black friends thing. Like, oh, man. Hey, by the way, speaking of which, hey, I, I've, got, I've got black friends. I want you to go sub to my man. I'm in Rich the Swag Lord on my channel right now because he, he, he he's, he's great. He's got his own channel. Sub to him. He's black. I, I, I do have, I have black friends. He's one of them. Go, go sub to him, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also have retarded friends. I want to, I want to throw out that, that inclusivity, you know, there it's, it's not just about race. I also have retarded friends. Uh, so go, go sub uh, to, you know, cult classic cage. You know, she, she's retarded, but yeah, she's wacky. Uh, no, it's, by the way, Cass, I love you. I know you're going to be cool with that joke. Um, and I'm and you as well. But yeah, seriously, him saying I got black friends is not a big deal, guys. The content grabs hold of people and weaponizes their biases. And in many cases, they don't even realize that they're parroting extremist rhetoric. This type of foot indoor indoctrination has been responsible for some historically tragic outcomes. Representation of anything except white men is framed as an attack on white men, which primes unaware people for toxicity online at best. No, that's, that's, that's not it. Oh my goodness. No one was throwing a fit about Wonder Woman when it came out. No one was throwing a fit about Scarlet Witch, no, or, th or Black Widow, I mean, my apologies, uh, we, we, when she was in the Iron Man movies. By the time her movie came out, yeah, because once again, they took a character that was already dead that no one cared about, tried to force a movie out of it, 
slapped it on Disney Plus because they couldn't put it in theaters, and then made the only male character in an already female-dominated movie a bumbling idiot. But no one was mad about, you know, Wonder Woman. No one was mad about, uh, you know, Star Wars uh, Rogue One, which, you know, again, female lead. No one was mad at the first Disney Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, because it actually was good and had some potential. It was the second and onward where you realize, oh, wow, so they're just gonna, you're gonna make Rey a uh, Mary Sue. All right, cool. That's, that's awesome. Like, people didn't start getting mad about this stuff until they saw the pattern of, oh, they just throw a woman in there to be the bestest ever instead of fully developing them like they would a male character. That's what people are upset about. The fact that women are not being portrayed as real characters, they're being portrayed as uh, effectively can-do-anything machines with no weaknesses, and it sucks. I wouldn't want to be a female in Hollywood right now, because honestly, a bunch of these female roles, at least in nerd projects, superhero movies, Lord of the Rings, whatever, yeah, you're not a real character. You're playing an unstoppable superhero with a vagina who's not going to get any sort of character development, and the only thing interesting is repeated over and over in every interview. I'm really glad to be a part of this because it's been such a patriarchal, dominated franchise. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, in a very woman-centered world, which I, I was very excited to kind of be that, because I feel like Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal, so it was kind of cool to have, like, this sort of woman-centered figure. Yeah, haven't heard that one before. And at worst, violent action offline. The man who attacked Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, was deeply into anti-fandom circles. Right. Drop the hammer. Uh, no. Hey, 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 hey. What is Our going on? Right I'm not getting any answer on Am I saying that they inspired his violence? No. But when the rhetoric he spewed online is identical to the fandom menace in Comics Gates and various other satellite groups, when he shares their content to justify openly hateful ideas about media, there's no denying it plays a role. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to know what? He also had something in common with Hitler. He drank water. Guess what? So did Hitler. Sometimes, crazy people, violent people, whatever, they're going to do some crazy things. Because let's be honest, you're clearly on the left. You've got a left-leaning bias. Well, didn't one of your left-leaning folks who was trans just go and shoot up a Christian school? Like, let's not act like she didn't share a bunch of left-leaning ideology, but she still went out there and committed an act of violence and killed six people, three of which were children. I have not brought this up on the channel yet. I was not going to. That being said, at this point... You brought up the Pelosi stuff first. I feel like I'm justified in bringing this up. Just because someone's on one side or the other, the political aisle doesn't automatically mean that, oh, oh, now we've got a whole problem with this entire movement or whatever. There's there's a major difference between a dude who attacked the husband of a politician and some guys whining about Star Wars online because a chick has more power than she should. Like, the, the two are not in the same ballpark. I'm not going to be out here being like, oh, goddamn trannies, every one of them are child murderers because one tranny went and shot three kids at a Christian school. That one tranny, however... Fuck her. She shouldn't have been there. That person should have probably died. Just like homeboy who attacked, you know, Nancy Pelosi's uh, husband. Dude wasn't a good dude. I'm not gonna avow him. I don't avow anyone who does any sort of actual violence. But let's leave the other parts of the community, left or right, out of it. Because you, everyone are individuals. They're responsible for themselves. You better look outside. <laughs> you better look out January 6th. Kick that fucking door open. Right-wing media has pushed the narrative that anyone who acknowledges gay or trans people existing and simply think they should be treated equally is a groomer. The real conversion therapy that happens in our world today is the... You bringing up Matt Walsh? Matt Walsh is as anti-nerd culture as it gets. Like, how is this even fair? The dude straight up calls Lord of the Rings and stuff like that infantile and thinks that the people you're talking about, geeks and gamers and whatnot, are wasting their time in the culture war. This is so... Okay, now I know you know nothing about the people you're commentating on. ...kind where a child is converted into LGBT. And that notion in a short amount of time rose up online to be everywhere. They're just evil. They're bad people and they want to groom kids. It's based on nothing. It's based on nothing but just disgusting bias and, and prejudice. But it's used to dehumanize. Okay, so if, if you look at any of these individuals, so far, 
They've not been the ones in the last five or six clips. These are all nerd commentators, or at least the ones I know. I know, I know Chris Gore, Nerd Roddick, Critical Drinker, Gary S. So I don't know the one on the far right. Ha! <laughs> that was an accident, but that's kind of funny. And the fat guy on the on, on the far left. N none of those guys were the ones from the several previous clips you've shown, like with Matt Walsh and shit like that. This is very clearly... Why would you even play that? That's not related to this. These guys throw a fit about superhero movies. The other guys are talking about child effing and whether or not being gay leads to that or not. I feel like they're two different subjects just because they might both like Trump or whatever doesn't automatically mean they agree on everything. Queer people. These channels use that rhetoric too. The father of the man responsible for the shooting of Club Q in Colorado. Violence works. Colorado club killer's porn star dad says, I praised him for his violent behavior as he reveals his biggest worry was that his son was gay after discovering he'd killed five people in LGBTQ club. Again, tragic. I mean, sure, by all means, tragic. But what's this guy do with guys on the internet who make their living c complaining about tights in superhero movies? I, I don't see the correlation. Reportedly was happy at least his son wasn't gay. And that case becomes worse when you see right-wing media figures falsely accuse the victims of Club Q being groomers and thus just... Do not know who any of these individuals are. Like, like you're, you're lumping them in here with people, who, with content creators who talk about nerd culture. I very much am a content creator who consumes nerd culture. That's why this channel exists. I don't know who any of these people are. So they're not in the same circles of, like, the anti-woke, if that's what you want to call them, sort of, of I mean, yeah, they, they might be, but they, these guys aren't hopping on to, to, you know, one of the Critical Drinker's live streams and talking about Lord of the Rings. Justify the terrible action the shooter committed there. That same exact notion is extremely common in fan spaces on YouTube. You probably know who Alex Winter is, or at least his character, Bill S. Preston Esquire. I'm Bill! He's got a documentary coming out in June called The YouTube Effect about just this phenomenon. The trailer calls this current era the misinformation apocalypse and promises to explore right-wing radicalization on the platform. I don't agree. Okay, but why not explore left-wing radicalization on the platform? Again, that just goes to show the partisan side of things. If, if misinformation is the problem, then it should be affecting both sides. And it is affecting both sides. M misinformation is absolutely a thing. That misinformation, no one will deny misinformation being real. But if you're only doing it to expose right-wing misinformation, then you yourself are not to be trusted. Because why, if misinformation is a problem, why not go after left-wing as well? Not instead of, as well. Because misinformation should be a problem that is bipartisan, that is regardless of your political affiliation. You should just be like, I don't want people to be misinformed because I want them to make the best decisions possible. But if they're only going after right-wing misinformation, well, that reeks of suspicious activity to me. ...that it is just a reflection of society. It's changed society. If we don't figure out this problem, we're going to lose what it means to be human. There's a podcast and a series of investigative reports by a group called Rewriting Ripley, including timeline and data studies, showing the direct links from the fandom menace to far-right media. And when I say far-right, I mean white nationalism, QAnon, open calls for the deaths of LGBT people. We're not just some clickbaiting YouTubers trying to create sensation. Y yeah, you are. By, by linking, you know, like Mike Cernovich to, you know, the critical drinker, of, you know, oh no, a Scotsman who is a published author and writes spy novels and criticizes Star Wars movies, linking him to a white supremacist? Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Many of the figures this video references are included in this network. Sources linked below. These are facts and they have a serious influence. We've taken the initiative to try to get people to see the truth in front of our faces. Bunch of left-wing nut jobs that have to infiltrate every aspect of your life and your business. These channels used to say they want politics out of entertainment. Well, yeah, yeah, they. I mean, nine times out of ten, that is the the want is for politics 
out of entertainment. They aren't asking for, you know, the next Star Wars movie to come out and glorify Donald Trump or anything like that. They would like the next Star Wars movie to not come out and glorify third wave feminism. They would just like it to come out and be a Star Wars movie. I don't see what's wrong with that want. Oh, well, if the person behind the camera votes for Trump or votes for Biden or votes third party or, or, or you know, writes in Rand Paul or what? Ever. Who cares? Is what they're saying a fair and valid want? I personally think, yeah, the idea of getting, you know, political ideologies out of Star Wars that are, you know, references to current modern day times when that's not been necessary in the past. Yeah, I, I, I'm a okay with that. I don't care if it's coming from a Biden voter's mouth or a Trump voter's mouth. Get that shit out of Star Wars. I want to watch space wizards throw objects to each other using, you know, space magic. I don't give a damn about the third wave feminism. They need to know what kind of food you eat. They need to determine what type of movies you like. They need to determine who The idea of politics simply means anything to the left of MAGA. Again, no, that, that is not, at least from the ones that I've watched. Again, I watched Geeks and Gamers. I watched The Critical Drinker. One of which, you know, Critical Drinker, dude, Scottish. What does he give a damn about MAGA? He's not in America. He didn't vote. He doesn't want this stuff either. So it's clearly not all about MAGA, as he would call it. It's not anything to the left of MAGA. It's the fact of the matter is stuff, you know, MAGA sort of ideologies aren't being put in these movies. So they're not complaining about that. If that sort of stuff was being forced into movies, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they would complain about that too because you don't go to a Star Wars movie and again want to talk about, you know, like, oh, hardcore to Second Amendment defenders. Like, no, that's immersion breaking for Star Wars. You just want to see a Star Wars movie. I guarantee they would complain about that as well. But no, again, you want to, again, this is a very, very biased. And again, someone like me, I have a bias here. I'll admit my bias. My bias is towards those who are being called anti-fandom. Do I agree with them politically? Honestly, probably not. My personal politics are centrist and on the, the uh, you know, political compass test, I'm actually a bit left of center. You know, I actually have a bit of a left lean politically. But in terms of the ideology and what these guys are asking for, yeah, I'm on their side. So, so what? Because I, I fiscally might agree with something slightly more left-leaning than right-leaning, can I? do I automatically have to disagree with what he's saying because he votes for Trump? No, that's retarded. Who you vote for. They need to determine how you raise your kids. They need to determine what you put into your body. Fuck these left-wing people. These channels aren't actually fan channels upset about politics in their mood. Air July, just a regular free-thinking comic book fan with some opinions. Uh, comic book fan. Owner of a comic book company. Just say it what it is. And, and that, again, once again, this is propaganda. This man owns a comic book company. He's not just a regular free-thinking comic book fan, which of course they're gonna, they're, they're gonna find a way to, to twist that. He is the owner of a comic book company. He writes his own comic with his own original character he created. Movies. How much does the Blaze pay you? Blaze doesn't pay me that much. I'm only a video contributor. I only show up every like once or twice mm -hmm. at the most a week. I mean, you mm -hmm. did. You got your That's picture. You got your picture on the wall. You must do something for him. Yeah, because I'm a video contributor. Why would my picture be on the wall? Their political channels using movies and fandom to propagate misinformation and hate. Don't let their outward persona of being passionate fans who are simply upset with the current treatment of beloved franchises fool you. These what, what, you can't be both? Can you not be a passionate- Look guys, I'm sure that Ted Bundy and Hitler were passionate fans of something. I don't know what, I haven't done a whole lot of research, but if you were to tell me that Hitler was a passionate fan of croquet, I'd be like, all right, I mean, yeah, you could probably be a passionate fan of croquet and still want to kill six million Jews. You could be a passionate fan of something, speak passionately about it, and also not be a good person. I ha that can happen on the left or the right. I don't think one negates the other. If Eric July wants to contribute to some sort of right-wing corporation, yeah, fine, he could do that. And if he, on his own time, wants to have his own YouTube channel and his own comic book company, that's his own thing. Yeah, yeah as long as he's paying his taxes on it, 
Who gives a damn? You don't need to conflate the two. Politics does not have to be involved in every aspect of everything you love. You want to know what my favorite hobby is? Because as much as I love, you know, Dragon Ball Z and playing video games, you think that something nerdy is my hobby? No, my favorite hobby is cooking. And let me tell you, ain't nothing political about cooking. I don't have to worry about Trump or Biden or left wing or right wing or whatever. When it comes to cooking, I need to worry about, all right, do I want to go with this five-course meal that's going to take me eight hours? Am I going to plate this properly? Is this going to look like art because I want to like art? And let me tell you guys, your boy Leon, he is one hell of a cook. I can cook some stuff for you. You will never need to go to a five-star restaurant because I love it. It is so much fun. And it's not political in the slightest. I'm not worried about bringing politics into my cooking. If I start a cooking channel, you bet it would be a pretty decently big channel if I give some time to grow. I ain't going to start a cooking channel because I want that to be my me time. That being said, if Eric wants to start a a YouTube channel talking about comics because that's his hobby... Then oh well if he ha- if he works for a right wing you know uh, a news company that doesn't mean the two have to intersect. These people are not fans, and it's time to expose them for what they are: dangerous. But we can't do this alone. However, we know that taking a stance against anti fandoms is not an easy thing to do. Each and every one of us has faced our fair share of kickback. Our videos often get bombarded with dislikes, get hate comments, and we see the same. Maybe if they're bombarded with dislikes, and this is just a random guess, because, again, when it comes to geeks and gamers, when it comes to the critical drinker, they don't ever send their fans after anybody. They don't tell their fans, go dislike this channel, go bombard this channel. They actually advocate for not doing that. If your videos are getting disliked, maybe people just don't like what you have to say. I have never seen this video before. This is my first time watching this video. That's why I'm reacting to it. But guess what? When it's over, it's getting a dislike, because I dislike this video, because you're very much pushing a propaganda piece while claiming, honestly, rightfully so, that they are pushing a propaganda piece, but you're white knighting like you're not doing it, like you're the real hero. The blatant hypocrisy is disgusting and quite honestly worthy of far more than just a single dislike. But am I going to attack you in your comments or anything? No, because I got, a, you know, common sense. I'm not an a-hole. But I'm definitely going to dislike this video because this is a disgusting initiative disgusting rhetoric that the anti-fandom channels use get recycled over and over and over again. Kill yourself. Ballot. And while comments like these don't affect me personally because perhaps I am a masochist, I understand that content creators don't want to be subject to this kind of harassment and hate. However, I ask you this. Do you truly care about the fandoms that you're a part of? Do you truly care about movies, TV shows, video games, and other media? Yes, which is why I criticize them so heavily in the modern era when they are objectively worse in the vast majority of cases. And do you care about honest and respectful media criticism and maintain- Honest, yes. Respectful, no, not at all. You can- you do not have to be respectful in any sort of criticism. You, if, if that's the style you want to go for, sure, go for it. But you do not necessarily have to be. There's no law that you gotta be respectful. And in my opinion, you can be disrespectful and still be correct. Are you gonna be taken as seriously? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on your audience. But a certain level of disrespect, I think, can actually be healthy depending on the context. As far as honest goes, I don't want you to say, oh, do you want an honest discord you ain't gonna give no honest opinion you're gonna suck off every black panther movie that comes out because you know oh it's so great for diversity we need more black superheroes so every time a black panther movie comes out you're gonna talk about how it's the greatest ever that's not honest it might be good it might be bad talk about the pros talk about the cons maybe the movie is actually just a six or a seven out of ten i don't trust you to be honest not to give it a nine or a ten when really inside you know it was actually a six but you're too afraid of the incredibly you know pro diverse uh, audience that you've cultivated if you spent years cultivating an audience that loves diversity loves inclusion and then you come out and you say yeah black panther was a six you're gonna get eaten alive by your own audience so yeah i don't trust you to be odd i don't trust you to be honest because you've got everything to lose by being honest the moment you're disappointed in a movie that checks all the boxes but doesn't have any heart Containing open spaces where fans can share their passions with each other, without having to deal with man-babies who cry woke at everything. 
If the answer is yes, then I ask you to not stand idly by and watch as fandoms are ripped apart, and watch buzzwords like woke be misused to build resentment towards minorities and progressive social movements, all while being disguised as valid media criticism. The people who listen to anti-fandom channels are getting trained to believe that woke is bad and woke is- Woke is bad. For those of you that don't know, woke is bad. Because what woke means, you know, for, for, for lack of it, for lack of a better term, what woke means pushing a left-leaning ideology first before any care is given to characters or story. If the ideology is front and center and everything else comes secondary, it is woke. And that is not good. Ideology should not be first in any form of creativity, in any form of art. I don't care if it's right wing, I don't care if it's left wing. Most of my favorite movies, because Hollywood has been liberal effectively since its inception, most movies do have an underlying liberal meaning if the movie has a political meaning to it at all. Because not all art does. People who say all art is political, they're morons. But for movies that do want to make some sort of political statement, most of the time it's a left leaning one. And in most cases, at least in the 70s, 80s, 90s, that's fine. Because it's an undertone, not an overtone. The story, the characters, the writing, everything else came first. And the message that they wanted to push about it, you know, I wouldn't even say push because they're not pushing it. They're subtly reminding you or hinting at you. And that's fine because you can get lost in the escapism. And then just maybe you'll have something to think about after when you're having a cool, fun dialogue with your friends. Or maybe you just want to talk about the gunfight scenes if it's an action movie. And that's fine too. That's what makes fandom. You can have these incredible moments of talking really deep and in-depth about a particular scene in a movie that might have some very introspective political meaning. Or you can just see John Wick reload his gun and shoot some dude in the face six times and be like, Yeah, I was awesome! That's what fandom is. Being able to separate the two depending on the moment. Because not everything is about politics all the time anything non-white, non-heterosexual, non-cisgender, and non-traditional gender roles. Hey, yeah, all right, let's make fun of these these weirdos. It's just a show for a bunch of lesbians. That's the only appeal that it has that obviously just put in a position because of her, her status. She's one of those typical pronoun brigade weirdos, put some mental illnesses and all that shit in her bio and all that. She doubled down on this idea that Vixen was gay. They seem to write these gay characters as predators all the time. This is a problem that will keep rising if we don't join the fight. This pipeline for insanity all begins with seemingly simple media critics like The Critical Drinker, Nerd Roddick, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Kinnell, Mahler, Ethan Van Skyver, Eric July, and many, many more. And I hate to say it, but the honest- Ah, uh, one day I probably would like to have my name on his exact tongue. I would like him to say my name. Ah, uh, Leon Idol is hardcore right wing. He's an alt-right. I'll be like- all right, I mean, I get, I voted for Obama, and I voted for Gary Johnson, and I donated to Andrew Yang's political campaign, but I guess I'm an alt-right. Critic has lost this round. Even if these popular channels get shut down, they'll be laughing all the way to the bank. They've made their money, and that is likely all they care about because evidence supports that these anti-fandom critics are simply grifters exploiting the algorithm to make money. Not to sound like a dick, but I just don't care. Um, I mean, there's 400 people watching this stream. If one of them Numbers. knows my name now that didn't know it before, it's a success for me. Um, yeah, I, at the end yes, of the day, yeah, I have tried good. to get build geeks and gamers by doing it the structured way, the uh, methodical way, the think it out, prep it, you know, take notes, you know, think about everything you're gonna say, and it fucking failed miserably on me. The day that I started doing what I'm doing right now, which is what you're, you know, having a problem with, is the day that I started becoming successful. So basically, what he's saying is the day he started being honest, just let, just just saying what was on his mind. Yeah, because people love authenticity, even if you disagree. I much prefer to, you know, someone being authentic when I disagree with them than knowing they're lying but agreeing with me. Yeah. Right. Why do you feel the need to call it out all the time? Call what out? Representation in media. What do you mean call it out? Like what? What? What is? You make. What, what is the problem with Miles Morales? Tokenization. That's it. That's simple. I have a long form video explaining exactly what I mean when I say tokenization, and we're talking about race, sexuality, and gender swaps uh, pertaining to these characters. Okay. 
not what tokenized character means at all. Y yeah, it is. So let's take a look at uh, definition number one here. To hire, treat, or use someone as a symbol of inclusion or compliance with regulations, or to avoid the appearance of discrimination or prejudice. That is exactly what tokenization is. Era July is incredibly correct. So when you're saying not what tokenized character means at all, yes, yes it is. Curiosity, Miguel O'Hara. What about him? What would you define him as? I define everybody that's not Peter Parker as an unoriginal Peter Parker. So if you open depicted a black Batman, you're going to get some backlash. And yeah, some characters have been written decently that are of different races and have suited up in the suit of a hero or a version of that hero. One of the more obvious is Miles Morales as Spider-Man. One of the more obvious. Yeah says written decently. He didn't say that Miles Morales was out. He said Miles Morales was tokenization. I agree that t Miles Morales is tokenization and he's decently written. The b both can be true. Is Miles Morales is Spider-Man. Now, most of these types of efforts are forced, corny, and lazy, but at least Miles Morales has his own background. I define everybody that's not Peter Parker as an unoriginal Peter Parker. This is far better than just simply making Peter Parker a black guy. But Miles is an exception, make no mistake. So, do you like Miles Morales then? No. They don't care about the effect they're having, but please don't misunderstand. I mean, people can change their mind though. Like, it, it, it's that simple. Like, people can change their mind. Uh, uh, maybe he's grifting, maybe, or maybe he's just changed his mind. You know, Miles Morales, he could, again, you said that video was four years ago. People's opinions change after four years. It, it's not that hard. Miles Morales, I loved Miles Morales when, when the comics first started. And then as, you know, Marvel got worse and worse as a company, yeah, I stopped caring. I really did. But I stopped caring about most Marvel characters in general. Miles just falls under that same umbrella of characters I stopped caring about. And me, these channels are still right wing, even far right at that. They still believe that Trump should be president. They still hate progressive politics. Oh, well. Again, they're allowed to have their political beliefs. I, 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 who cares that they believe that Trump should be president? First of all, by the way, Eric July hates Trump. He does not believe that, that Trump should be president. Um, just throwing that out there. So there's already a mischaracterization or miscategorization, whichever you want to call it. But oh well if they think that Trump should be president. People are allowed to have their political beliefs. Again, that doesn't necessarily need to, to be tied to the, the nerd culture or to fandom. You can love Spider-Man and be a Trump supporter. You can love Spider-Man and be a Biden supporter. You can love Spider-Man and be a you know, you know, uh, anarcho-capitalist who wants to burn the system down and doesn't believe in a president. Liking Spider-Man doesn't matter when it comes to your politics. They still hate seeing people from any minority play a significant role in their media. These Gavin McInnes, they say Gavin, dude, Gavin McGinnis hates them. He went on one of their shows uh, a few weeks ago. My biggest video on YouTube was covering this controversy. He went on one of their shows, talked smack to them the entire time, and finished the show by whipping his dick out and pissing all over the camera. Like, that literally happened. Like, he, they could have gotten the show canceled because he did that unprompted. Uh, so, yeah, I would absolutely say that G Gavin McGinnis, whatever they're about to say, is a bad example he absolutely hates nerd culture and spent the entire three hours he was on one of their shows dogpiling them. People are inherently political, despite their appearance of being apolitical fans who just want politics to stay out of their media. However, their content... For those that don't know, the guy in the middle, Gavin McInnes. If you haven't watched my, my, my video on what happened with the Gavin McInnes stuff, go back, watch it. It's, it's a good video. There's probably a reason it's for the most viewed video on my channel. But yeah, they're out here trying to say, oh, this white nationalist they have in the middle, uh, you know, the fact they're sitting down with him shows they're white nationalists as well. He hates them. He spends this entire three-hour show talking trash to them, saying they're a bunch of oh, dudes who, who never got laid, who couldn't, you know, leave the stuff they lived, they loved as kids in the past. He literally throws every 70s and 80s nerd-to-jock stereotype at them, then literally whipped his dick out and pissed all over the camera. They weren't exactly agreeing with the guy or, or enjoying his company, but... You don't always agree with everyone that you had. You think that Jay Leno loved every single person he ever had on his show, every guest? Or do you just have people on to talk and do your show? Sometimes it goes great, other times you fake it till you make it, and sometimes it does not go great. This is a time it didn't go great. 
And you know what? It's a time we'll remember because Gavin was exposed for who he really was for the people that were unfamiliar with him. If anything, you should be thanking these geeks and gamers. They're not the alt-right extremists you think they are because they, just, they happen to help expose people to the sort of menace that Gavin McInnes actually is content is still disingenuous. They do this almost purely to make money. They don't care about the fandoms they claim to be a part of. They couldn't care less about the media they claim to love. They don't actually want anything to change because if Hollywood stopped being so-called woke, then these channels would lose their source of income, popularity, and relevance. As absolutely false. They, they, they absolutely do want to change. You wanna know how you know? The Mario movie. If the Mario movie was bad, these guys would be making a killing off of it. They'd spend all their time, all their effort in these channels ragging on the Mario movie, and they'd be making a killer amount of money. But you know what? The Mario movie was good. And guess what? They made videos on how good it was. Several videos on how good it was. And they still got all their money. They still got paid. They still got their views. So if things do change in Hollywood and in and, and, and the world... And, you know, they actually get uh, fandom and, and media and whatnot to be whatever they want to be. Oh, well, they can still do what they're doing. Mario was just, it just came out. It was great. They made videos talking about how great it was. And the views still came in. It's almost like people are not going for the content. They're going for the person behind it because they enjoy the creator. They enjoy their personality. They come for the authenticity. Not just to be, you know, in some sort of echo chamber hearing what they don't want to, like, like, Again, I can tell by the guy, you know, by you speaking, that I don't like you because you are inauthentic. Because I kind of, you know, I literally called out lies in this 20-minute video that we're 18 and a half minutes in. My God, my video is going to be long. I've been calling out lies for the last 20 minutes, and I've agreed with one thing you've said so far. I can tell I don't like you because you're inauthentic. Because if you've done any amount of research you would know that half of what you're saying isn't true. Or maybe you did do your research, and even worse, you're lying anyway because you are just as divisive and just as partisan as who you are claiming to hate and who you're claiming is dangerous. You're just doing it for the other side, so it's okay. As fans, they rarely ever talk about the things that they actually enjoy. And on the off chance that they do, it's often to bring down something they hate. These people have no integrity, there's no consistency to their ideology or their content. And there doesn't need to be, because it's a mind virus intent on corrupting the brains of the people who watch. Anti-fandoms are detrimental not just to the media and fandoms that we love, but also to the outside world and the rhetoric and ideologies they spread. And listen, you don't need to like The Last Jedi, you don't need to love every new MCU movie. You can still think that there are examples of disingenuous diversity from companies aiming to take advantage of political movements that often result in shallow progressivism. Now, you're finally speaking to me! Finally! We are 19 minutes and 12 seconds into your video, and now you're finally speaking to me! I am one of these individuals, uh, but y you had to wait till the last minute of your video to speak to the average person? You're not getting your message across when all you've done so far is blatantly attack the other side in 20 minutes, which most people probably aren't going to sit through. I'm doing it because, I, you know, like you said earlier about masochism, but now you've got a minute left and you're finally speaking to me? Uh, you lost me already because you've said so much stuff that isn't true. Yeah, I'm going to be like, hey, th thanks for finally acknowledging me. But I still don't like or trust you because of everything you said earlier that's blatantly false. I know you can't be trusted. And tokenization. These things are fine. We can discuss this respectfully as fans. However, that's not what these channels spew. The anti-fandom is hateful. They feed on outrage. And they're dangerous. So love us or hate us, one thing is certain. We are not backing down. There needs to be a counter voice to provide an alternative to the voices that dominate these social media. Bro, they are the counter voice. You guys are already getting your way. I, I, I don't know what you mean there needs to be a counter voice. The fandom initiative is not a counter voice. To be a counter voice, you have to be going against the norm. But the norm is tokenization. The norm is diversity. The norm is inclusion. The norm is equity. The norm is getting female directors just because they're female, even though all they've done is create is direct two episodes of a TV show and, and uh, in a biography uh, or in a documentary. You know that is the norm. 
every TV show now has gay characters, has trans, has representative characters, which is fine. Again, nothing against that, but every TV show has that. Every TV show has inclusion. Every movie has inclusion. I mean, nowadays to even be considered for an Oscar, you have to meet certain qualifications for diversity. Th that checkbox was actually shown. Like it has been proven factual that movies cannot be considered for Oscars for any Academy Awards unless they meet certain diversity inclusions. So you're not being a counter voice. The things you're asking for are already the things that are in effect. Media platforms. So we've teamed up, organized chaos, actual fandom, and turf nation to provide a real voice to media commentary. And we're looking for allies. We've already partnered with channels like Willis Greedia, Eric's Verse, and we have a team of people behind the scenes helping with research and more. Well, guys, that was cancer. That was absolute cancer. This uh, recording has been going on, at least on my end, before all editing, for over an hour and a half. So, yeah, I guess you guys are about to get my first super long video. I, I hope that does not ding me in the algorithm or whatever. Don't know, don't care. This needs to be said. They said at the end they were looking for allies. You ain't gonna find yourself an ally in me. Because, you know what? You're completely disingenuous. You're lying. It's easy to tell. You might not like those guys, and that's fine. You don't have to like the people in what you call the fandom men but the complete miscategorization and absolute disregard for any sense of, of honesty is quite frankly disgusting and I, I cannot wait to see this fall apart because I, I get what you're trying to do you're trying to basically get a bunch of money by saying hey we're the left-wing version of these right-wing guys but <laughs> if the gay Robin comic book has taught us anything people on the left in nerd culture don't spend money but those are just my opinions let me know yours in the thoughts below if you made it all the way to the end of this video my god you are a trooper and please subscribe I know I'm asking a whole lot of you considering what you just had to sit through but hey recording this and editing it was a lot of work I feel like I also have earned it so come on give me that subscription pretty pretty please I am a nerdy news channel I cover nerdy news every day not always reaction videos but I felt like this one had to be done usually it's Magic the Gathering comics, anime, you name it, it's all here in the Nerdosphere, and this has been Words of Paradise.